So hello everyone, this is Prashant here. Continuing in our playlist, today we will be learning that how do we connect our Python script to a Oracle database, right? So continuing with this, I would like to mention that this would be this tutorial will be will be very important with uh, respect to data science and machine learning. And uh, one more thing that I would like to mention is that I have got a several queries that how do you set up a new Oracle database in a device and a SQL developer and that regarding that I have already uploaded a document in my github repository that how do you install an oracle database a generator database in your device and then you install your SQL developer to access that database so that you can use it for your practice purpose also if you are if you are new to this and uh, for any queries you can just ping me on LinkedIn that I have mentioned in the description and my GitHub repository will be also mentioned in the description. Please go through it. And in case of any doubt, please feel free to ping me. So yeah, continuing with this, what are the basic libraries that we need to access our database through our Python script? So the basic library that we need over here is CX Oracle. If you have already installed it, you don't need to worry about it but if you don't have it just do one thing just give the command of pip install cx oracle in your jupyter notebook and in case you want to install it in your conda environment just open the conda prompt and over there you can give the same command pip install cx oracle which will install the required library for that so yeah i will be describing all the libraries and all the codes that are required i am not typing all the codes right here because it is just uh, consuming time nothing else uh, so you can find the code also in my github repository so for your reference also it will be easy so yeah these are the basic libraries numpy as np pandas as pd and pandas io.sql as psql this is very important over here i'd like to mention the reason being this is the library that we'll be using to read our sql queries the sql queries that we have already learned in our past tutorial tutorial videos that were basic library that, that were basic SQL queries regarding the selection of data, regarding the creation of table, deletion of table, and all those things. And then we have CX Oracle. The CX Oracle, CX Oracle is something that we'll be needing to connect our script to database. So this will be used to generate a language. This will be used to connect to your database, right? So how do you do? How? So first of all, I'd like to mention there are two basic things that we'll require. First is connection string. Second is the connection. How do we write a connection string? What is connection string and what do, why, do, why do we need a connection? So connection string is something, just think of it as a box A. If there is a box A and you want to access any box, let it be a mailbox. If you want to access a mailbox, how do you go? You will need the username to it, you will need the, you will need the password to it, you will need the URL to it, right? Similarly, if you want to access a database, you need all these details. What will be the username of database? What will be the password of my database? Where, what is the place where it is hosted? Just like URL. What is the IP address? I mean, as you know, the URL, it is exactly such as the server name. It, what is the server where it, where it is hosted? What is the service name? So all of those things I have mentioned over here. So for an example, if you want to see, I can show you. So see, if you want to know what are the properties that will be required to generate a string connection string is that you can just go over here and go to the properties of the database my database this is my database you can just go there properties of the database and as you can so yeah as you can see over here when we just ask for the properties you know what is the name of this database that will be that will not be required because it is just the name with which you access the database you will name you will need the username you will need the password you will name the host name it is local host over here local host has the ip address of 127.0.0.1 and the port is 1521 and service name is xcpdb1 and it can be anything in your case it's just in my case it is this and that is same thing that i'll be using over there as my connection string So as we know what is connection connection string now, connection string is given by the, this sequence, username, password, at the rate where it is hosted, you can write local host if it is in your uh, local device, if it is any, any other server you will need to mention the server and you can also mention the local host or you can just give the IP address 127.0.0.1 and then this uh, service name and the port ID. This is the sequence you will need to follow and then you will need just the connection. Connection string will be used 
by CX Oracle library to connect it and after this purpose your your script will be directly connected to the Oracle DB. Now you just need to write on your queries, your any analysis that you want to do. After this process, you have connected your script to your database. It works as a connection between both of them. So now we have written the basic query that is select local value pro value of production, time of production from TOL production that we have written last time also. And we have read it. So you can write anything over here. If I have mentioned this, what was the given condition that select the location value production time of production from the T oil production? If you have written the same thing in your SQL query, you would have got these values, right? And now to convert those those values that you get in a SQL query to a value in a data frame, what you do, you just need to use the PSQL. As I have mentioned over here, PSQL is used to convert your SQL queries into pandas. So pandas data frame, as you can see, we have written the query, query is select location, value of production, time of production from T oil production. T oil production is our table name. From the table name, we have got three column names, which values are required by us. And we have converted into data frame, as you can see. So what happened over here is, so to make it more clear, if I write the same query over here, select loca time of production value prod from t or production. So yeah, as you can see, we got the same values over here also after running it in our database. So in our database, we got all the values which has which has satisfied this query. You can give on the conditions over here like where loca is equal to. I have already shown all of these things to you. If you haven't already been through it, please go through the last video. It was very important because we are just using those queries now to get certain values. See so yeah. For the locations turkey these are the values over here so as you saw over there the same query when we do when we wrote the same query in our sql developer we got these values now what happened is we got all these values in our data frame once you have pulled out your data from the crores of data or let's say any say any number of database you have pulled out the data of your interest now it's upon you how do you play with that data right See, I have written the basic query that select location, value production, time production from T oil production and I have just converted into data frame by using the PSQL because PSQL will convert my SQL language output into a data frame. So it has converted it into data frame that was named by query DF. And uh, as you can see, the values have come over here. Now, let me show you <clears throat> what if I want for a specific location turkey. So what happens over here is you can just give this command in a data frame if you want to um, have the data just for Turkey and you will see the value over here it has been populated and what if I just want to pull the data of this Turkey like I have pulled the complete data set right and so there is no use of using SQL language if I am pulling out the complete data set if I want the specific data set then I should write the SQL query for the specific data right so let me show you how do I write it let us say this is query number two and this is very important guys that you mention your SQL queries into single quotes, double quotes or triple quotes. I prefer it in triple quotes because in that case you can use the single quotes and double quotes inside your query. So as of now we are not doing any further analysis, analysis on this. So I am not showing you with the double quotes or triple quotes. You, I am just using the single quotes and select, select location value production and time of production from oil production where loca equal to char right i have written 
I've written my query right here. And uh, now let's see. Now we'll convert our query into data frame. So for that purpose, df query to equal to psql dot read sql psql dot read sql query mention the query that you want to read and then you'll connect it to your data set and the, my connection was oracon as you can see i have connected over here oracon is the connection between my data set as well as the database so what i do is i run a query i i write a query and then i try to pull the data from our database using this query so i'll connect my script with the database and i'll run this query it is same thing that you do you go in or in your sql developer open the oracle database and write a query it's the same thing that you do when you open a sql developer you connect it to your oracle db and run a query there so yeah we'll write this and when we run it we have it let me show you what has happened dev query to so yeah, we have the same thing that has happened over here and the same thing could have, could have happened over this if you just try to see what is df1. So yeah, both of these are same. Both of these are same. Just the thing is I have just pulled only that data from my database which was required by me. Over here I pulled everything that I, that, everything that I wanted to have. I pulled it from my database and then in my data frame I have played with it. And the second case, I have just pulled the data that, has, that was required by me. And this is the prefer preferable way because you should pull only those the, those amount of data that you will require for the linear uh, case, right? So this is the thing. You can write any query that you want to do. Anything that all of those variations regarding the conditions that I have shown you. Like if you want to see, if you want to see like in, uh, I want to have the the value of production between certain between certain range then where where value prod between 20 and 30 so yeah as you can see there are only 63 rows with the certain conditions and have been there so if your client asks you can you please tell me that what are the location of those places where at a certain time the production was between this range or like between in its complete life cycle the production was between this range like if company has this criteria that a production between 20 to 30 is a very good production and it the client wants to know that in the last three months data can you please pull out only can you pull out all those data sets which shows where the production in half an hour was between 20 to 30 what would you do you will just run this query and even if the data database oracle database is containing crores of data you will get the certain data set within fraction of seconds if, if the data set is a very big data it will take like three four seconds and that is mere very small time when you compare it with the analytics that you're going to do with it right so you can do anything you can, you can play with any of those queries that i have told you that i have uh, asked you to um, play with and to practice it you can use it in real time so now I uh, will be doing a very small and a very good analytics on it. So yeah, now let's check our data frame. So value production is a flow data type. So we can get our analytics analytics from here. Now, if the question is what is the like, you, it can be a univariate analysis of value production that what was the minimum, maximum, standard deviation and variance, everything. For that purpose, you know what is the command. So we can give it like def query to dot describe. So yeah, mean was this count as 18 there 18 maximum the maximum ton of exploration that was done uh, was ton of production that was done was 2.7 and minimum was 2.108 so this is kind of data that you can easily populate now in the second part of this video i will show you that how can you get this data back into 
your uh, tables right like in a database if you want to create a new table that will generate all the average out values all the maximum minimum values and all that all that sort of data sets then how can you do it so for as of now what you have learned is that how do you connect your script to a database how do you run a query from here directly into your data set from in your, in your database and then what are the queries that you can run what are the conditions that, that you can put on that and then how then how do you do the analytics on it you can also plot a graph if you wish to plot it and uh, so for that df query to dot plot x equal to on x axis we will have time production time of production y axis will have value production so yeah as you can see you have easily plotted it and it is a very good way of analyzing your data that you have plotted your data the problem statement that you can generate from here is that can you tell me the minimum maximum average production of a day in turkey can you tell me can you plot on the can you visual can you help me visualize the data from a data set that contains crores of data and contains the data from different loki different locations and stuff so see how easy it it is if you are dealing with your sql in your python you have just pulled out the data with a single query you have converted into it into a data frame after that you have got all the data from here and in that you have plotted your data over here now in the second part we'll be learning what how do you get back into your database from the results that you have obtained here like for example if you wanted just the minimum maximum and average value of any location how do you populate the big data back into a table into a new table obviously you will need to create a new table where you will get your output so we'll be discussing all of that in our second part so thank you for, for tuning in and for any queries related to this you can ping me on my linkedin so thank you